Socrates. Galileo Galilei. Isaac Newton. Daniel Boone. Patrick Henry. Elizabeth Vigie Lebrun. Louis Braille. Queen Victoria. Florence Nightingale. Elizabeth Blackwell. Ellen White. Sitting Bull. Gustav Eiffel. Alfred Nobel. Frederic Augusta Bartholi. Mary Cassatt. Carl Benz. John Henry Holmes. George Washington Carver. Nellie Bly. Laura Ingalls Wilder. Wilbur Wright. Orville Wright. Sir Ernest Shackleton. Winston Churchill. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Margaret Merriweather Post. Amelia Earhart. Willa Beatrice Brown. Jacques Cousteau. Rosa Parks. John F. Kennedy. Jackie Robinson. Edmund Hillary. Neil Armstrong. Aro Bletchman. Jamie Escalante. Jane Goodall. Daphne Sheldrick. Rick Rescorla. Alex Trebek. Candy Leitner. Sharon M. Draper. Ellen Ochoa. Maya Lynn. Wayne Gretzky. Jamie George. Bra Brandon Burlesworth. Dominique Dawes. Misty Copeland. Sonia Richards Ross. Amanda Gorman. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Welcome to our 15th annual biography tea. Thank you for all the hard Thank you for all the hard work and dedication of each of our parents. We know this is a big project, and we thank you for all your support of your child, your children, and also thank you to each of our students for the hard work that they've put in. Don't they look amazing? <laughs> Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the beautiful day outside. We ask that you be with us as we each give each child clarity of mind and um, memory and help this to be a blessing to those that have come to see the program, to those that are uh, watching online, and also to each student. And thank us, help us to bring glory to you, Lord. And thank you for the character traits that you instill in each of us and what an example you are to, of all the traits. We thank you for your love. In thy name, amen. Someone get a picture of all of us in the timeline. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to the timeline again. Sorry, we didn't. I forgot that piece. <laughs> Mr. Sean is here.
Welcome to the 15th edition of TLC Preps Biography Tea, Jeopardy style. It's a pleasure to be here to be your host today. And our first question is, she was the second woman to serve on the United States Supreme Court. And the answer is, who is Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Hi, I am Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I'm also known as um, RBG, and I was nine, only, only, there was only nine women of about 500 men in my 1956 graduating cl I mean, class at Harvard Law School. I, um, when I was in law school, my husband was also in law school, and unfortunately, he got cancer while we were in law school. And when that happened, I went to classes for both myself and him all through during that time. We also had an 18-month-old baby during that time. And um, it was during this difficult time, we were able to persevere and make it through it through devotion and dedication. I, during that time, I also made the uh, Harvard Law Review and the Columbia Law Review. I was the only woman to ever do both at the same time. And I uh, graduated first in my class from Columbia University. I went on to be an American lawyer, jurist, and an associate um, justice of the Supreme Court. I served from 1993 to 2020. And um, I was just very devoted to my family and to the causes I believed in. During my time on the Supreme Court, I made friends with a man named Antonin Scalilli, Scalilli, Scalia, saying that name, Scalia. And um, we had a mutual, uh, we had a, a friendship that we bonded over uh, opera, good food, opera, good food, and um, our childhoods in New York. We had opposing, he, he had opposing views from me, but we had mutual respect for each other, and um, we both, all, both knew that we had a love for the Constitution, court, the court, and our country. Um, in fact, one time, Anthony, Ant, Antonin, <laughs> um, said of me, what's not to love? Except for her uh, views about the law, of course. And um, our deep friendship, respect for each other, and civility was a legacy to our country. And everyone, many people think that everyone should try to uh, embrace this, of getting along even though we didn't have it, the same views. Uh, also, I just wanted to mention that she was an avid reader. I, mean, I was an avid reader, and uh, this is some advice for the children. Reading is the key that opens doors to many good things in life. Reading shaped my dreams, and more reading helped me make my dreams come true. So keep reading. He is credited as the founder of Western philosophy? And the answer is, who is Socrates? Thank you. Yeah, we have microphones now. Yes. Go ahead. A microphone. Neat. I'm Socrates. Okay. Some pictures of me in the older years. This is young Socrates. Okay. So. I, some kids confuse me. I look like Jesus. I understand he was a great person. He comes almost 400 years after, after me. Socrates is a lot is written by him. He's referred to as the father of uh, Western philosophy. But we don't have any records of his written work. I didn't write anything down. Um, my student did. He wrote it down. And that's what carried on my legacy. My famous student is Plato, and he taught a student that was very knowledgeable, Aristotle, and then Aristotle taught 
Alexander the Great. So you can see the lineage of great Greeks that followed from good teachers. As a young man, I went into the army. I fought very well. We were fighting the Spartans, and we did very well. I came back, for, and as a young man and landowner, I went into the assembly. It was referred to as the Ecclesi, but it's where democracy was. And unfortunately, I made some enemies on my stay there. There were a couple generals who had left the battlefield uh, of the, one of the battles, and they left dead soldiers behind. And the Athenians thought that wasn't a very nice thing to do. And so the generals were being tried, and if found guilty, they would be put to death. And I said, the war is over. We're done. We're in peace times. We don't need a reaccount and have these men lose their lives because they didn't want to go back and retrieve the dead bodies of the fallen soldiers. And I was able to persuade the council to not punish them. When my time ran out there, I made the enemies, they got back in power and they actually rekindled the case and they did try the generals and they did have them executed. And I did not like that. As Socrates, I was known for being a good educator, teacher. Socrates' method is the idea of asking questions. You'd state your belief, and I'd say, well, why? Well, tell me a little bit more. Tell me a little bit more. And maybe you would shape it, and you would become stronger in what you would believe. Unfortunately, there were a lot of parents that didn't like this idea of kids always asking why. Okay? So I got a bad name for that. And they found a way to go ahead and have me try for two Two altercations. One was, I did not believe in the Greek gods. The Greek gods, the mythology, they're making mistakes, doing crazy things, getting themselves in trouble. They were not godly at all. But I did believe there was a god, only a one god, and that's what we should be worshiping. I was tried and found guilty for that, and I was tried and found guilty for uprising the young people and asking questions. Now, the vote of the assembly was 500. 220 said, he's a good guy. 280 says, no, he's a bad guy. We need to get rid of him. I was 71 at the time. I taught for a while. My friends and colleagues said, oh, escape. You can go live on an island. You can go live in the mountains. We'll take care of you. And I felt if I ran away, it proved that maybe I was guilty. I said, no, I'll stay and take the punishment. And the punishment was to drink a hemlock, a poison drink. And, and I drank it, and then history has given me the father of Western philosophy, asking why, and figuring it out to reinforce your opinion. Socrates. Despite being an American icon, this person, actually born in a small city in northern Ontario, Canada, he was a native of Sudbury, Ontario. And the answer is, who is me, Alex Trebek. <laughs> now, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have the great opportunity to travel around this great nation of ours and even around the world hosting Jeopardy! shows. And Ms. Dorchek gave me a call earlier this year and asked if I could come by to this TLC prep biography tea. I had no idea what a biography tea was. I didn't know if I knew how to hold the teacup just right or exactly what this was. Uh, and she explained to me that there would be a group of distinguished guests such as I've never seen before. I've had some, some guests on my Jeopardy show, but nothing like we have today. And so I was very excited to be here. Um, just a little bit about myself. I was born in Sudbury, uh, Ontario. I am Canadian, eh? You know, we like to have a good time, eh? Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I had quite the journey coming from, a professional journey coming from um, a news reporter in Canada to the United States to be a, initially a game show host, but now I am a quiz show host and I have been honored to be the host of Jeopardy since 1984. Uh, it has opened many doors for me um, and you know I am just so blessed by the people that are on my show and the people that I've been able to meet and just give you a preview each time I'm out traveling 
and we do these um, uh, guest shows. We have commercial breaks, and during the commercial breaks, I allow the audience to ask me questions. So I'm not going to go into too much about myself because I believe that our guests are the star of the show, and I'm just the host. Um, if all you remember me as is that nice uncle that joins you on television at 7.30 every evening, then my life has been a success. So, as I like to say, on with the show. He was inducted into the Art Directors Hall of Fame in 1999. And the answer is, who was R.O. Bletchman? Green mic. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, Mr. Bletchman. Uh, could you tell us what you are famous for? I am famous for my illustrations, graphic novelist, and editorial cartoonist, known for my humorous and unique illustrations for the New York Times. The New Yorker and the American Advertising Classics for Alka Seltzer. So, who are some famous people that you may have known or may have lived during your lifetime? The artist Andy Warhol. He was my friend and neighbor. We both were successful commercial illustrators. And uh, as as an artist, what would you say is your uh, most prominent character trait? Creative. My signature drawing style, which is shaky line, has been seen as the most remarkable thing about my talent. Have you had to overcome any obstacles along the way? I had to face what other people would think about my drawing style. It was unique. I worked hard to show my own style, and people saw it was my signature. And do you have an interesting story you'd like to share with us today? My teacher didn't think I can become an artist. I didn't blame her since I can barely copy a piece of pa drawing. I was pushed by my mom to take the exam for the high school music and art. By the time I got to college, I considered myself to be an artist and started drawing. That's how my career started. Well, I am so grateful that your mother pushed you along the way to encourage you mm -hmm. to become the great artist that you are so that we can enjoy your artwork. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure getting to know you better. Thank you for having me. She was an American painter and printmaker. She lived much of her adult life in France where she befriended Edgar Degas and exhibited with the Impressionist. And the answer is, who is Mary Cassatt? Good morning, Ms. Kasai. Good morning. Welcome to our TLC Prep Jeopardy style stage. What are you most famous for? I'm most famous for painting women and their children in daily lifetime, in everyday life. In everyday life, yes. Um, were, have you met any famous people or famous people who lived during your lifetime? I knew Edgar Degas, another famous impressionist painter from France. And what is your most prominent character trait? 
I was considered creative because I had a unique style with soft pastels and loose brush strokes. And what uh, obstacles did you have to overcome? Ob some obstacles I had to overcome were being a woman painter even when there weren't many and standing up for women's rights even though my family was against me becoming a professional artist. Uh, do you have a special story you would like to share with us this morning? My dad wanted me to marry and come back to Philadelphia after going to France to study at the age of 22. Edgar Degas and I admired each other's work for years. He visited my studio and invited me to get to know all the other artists in Europe. I decided it would be best for my career to stay in France and never marry. My friends, jo my parents, and my family joined me in France and were a great company to me. Well, thank you for joining us here at TLC Prep this morning, and we appreciate you sharing your stories with us. Thank you for having me. On June 30th, 2015, she became the first African-American woman to be promoted to principal dancer in the American Ballet Theater's 75-year history. And the answer is, who is Misty Copeland? Well, welcome, Ms. Copeland. It's an honor to have you with us this morning. Uh, what are you most famous for? I am famous for being the first black principal dancer in the American Ballet Theater in its 75-year history. Uh, what are some famous people that you have met? I met with Barack Obama, and we discussed our strong mothers, our ethnicity, our success in raising two daughters in America today. And what character trait would you say best describes you? A character trait that describes me is determined because I had to compete for attention with five siblings. My sister had been part of a dance team that I want to be part of, and my mom had been a cheerleader. I was shy and had a hard time learning how to read, but, su but I succeeded. And yes, you did. Uh, did you have other obstacles that you had to overcome? I had to overcome my parents getting divorced, which was difficult for me. But I worked hard and kept on going. Do you have an interesting story that you want to share with us today? Yes. I performed the Firebird in the year 2012, and I was 30 years old. The Firebird is a ballet and orchestra work by the Russian composer Igor Stravinsky. Very good. Thank you for being with us this morning, and thank you for sharing uh, on the dance floor. You, we're all uh, just enthralled when we get to watch you. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. He was an American astronaut and aeronautical engineer who became the first person to walk on the moon in 1969. And the answer is, who is Neil Armstrong? Good morning. Good morning. Well, Mr. Armstrong, this question is going to be a little redundant, but what are you most famous for? I'm famous for I was the first one to step on the moon. That's one small step for man, 
and one giant leap for mankind. Yes, we all remember that day back in 1969. Uh, who are some famous people that you knew? After the flight to the moon, I met Richard Nixon, a famous president, and in training and on the way to the moon, I met Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. Mr. Armstrong, what would you say is your most prominent character trait? Valiant. Going to the moon was the most dangerous adventure in human history. So I risked my life for the sake of our knowledge and understanding. And what obstacles did you have to overcome? I had to face my daughter Karen dying from a bad fall that hurt her brain. But how I overcame that was when I knew she would want me to keep going as an astronaut. And when I was in the Korean War, in my Panther F9F fighter jet, I was gun-fired. And when I was falling, part of the right wing was sheared off by a cable as a booby trap. Mm. What... Um what other stories would you like to share with us this morning? You know how you learn how to drive before you know how to fly? Well, I learned how to drive, but I've never learned how to fly apart, so yes, I'll, I'll go along with that. Well, I did the opposite. That is amazing. Tell us a little bit more about that. How old were you when you learned to fly? 16 years old. So about the time we're learning to drive our cars, you are learning to fly. Well, I guess that's how you become a great astronaut, is learning to fly. Yes. Yeah. Well, Mr. Armstrong, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, thank you for being valiant and for taking that trip to the moon for us. Thank you for having me. He is a Cuban-born concert violinist who has enjoyed a successful performing career since his late teenage years. By the beginning of this century, he was performing more than 100 times per year uh, to over a half million people. By the end of the first decade of this century, he had played in more than 35 countries and recorded and released 15 CDs. And the answer is, who is Jamie George? Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> could you, I understand that you had a big decision to make in your life. Could you share what that decision was? Yes. No. What did you decide to do? I placed the moon playing violin to people around the world. Well, we are so glad that you decided to use your music to follow Jesus and to glorify him. And I understand that you want to share one of your songs with us this morning? Yes? Okay, let's see if we can't get you to play one of your songs for us.
Thank you so much, Mr. George. When God gives you a talent, you just don't want to stop using it. So, so thank you, Mr. George. She was an award-winning author, educator, speaker, poet, and National Teacher of the Year. And the answer is, who was Sharon M. Draper? So many books and so little time to read. Yeah. So, Miss Draper, what are you most famous for? I'm famous for being an American educator and author of many children's books. My specialty is children and youth books. I'm also famous for being the 1997 National Teacher of the Year Award winner. Who are some famous people that you have known or have been able to meet? I met President Bill Clinton. He was the one who introduced me to the 1997 National Teacher of the Year Award. Well, I also knew <laughs> Alex Haley. He sent me a letter saying that I was a good writer and he has influenced me in my writing. Well, congratulations on receiving that award. What would you say is a character trait that best describes you? The character trait that best describes me is attentive because I look at everything in detail, then process it out in my teaching and in my writing. Have you had any obstacles that you've had to overcome? One of my obstacles during my childhood was not being able to read any of the books in the adult section of the library when I had already read all the books in the children's section. The librarian there saw my frustration and created a special green card for me. That allowed me to go in the adult section of the library and pick out books that were content appropriate for my age. That sounds like a wonderful librarian. Do you have any stories that you'd like to share with us this morning? There are many stories that I can tell, but this one is most memorable. In my first year of teaching, I had a student who needed special help. I, I structured my lessons for him and helped him achieve. The principal saw what I was doing and became mad and threatened my job. I still did everything I could for that kid and helped him achieve and succeed in his work. And I learned never to give up on children because of their inability to learn on average. Well, I can see clearly why you won the National Teacher of the Year Award. So thank you for your love for your students and thank you for being here sharing with us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And some of the books that I wrote is Stella by Starlight, Out of My Mind, Stella by, Stella by Starlight, Tears of a Tiger, Out of My Mind, and Out of My Heart. Those are only just a few. And if you're interested in purchasing any of her books, there's a Barnes & Noble just down the road. <laughs> he is the only person who led the police departments in two cities in the United States, New York and Los Angeles. And unfortunately, uh, he is sick this morning, 
and was not able to join us. Um, but the answer is, who is William Bratton? And a famous quote by William Bratton, we all have a fundamental right to live free from fear, free from crime, and free from disorder. But while we share that right, we also, also share the duty to secure it. You have to bear your fangs once in a while. He was an offensive lineman for the Arkansas Razorbacks football team from 1995 to 1998. He joined the team as a walk-on and eventually became an All-American. And the answer is, who was William, I'm sorry, Brandon Bullsworth? Good morning, Mr. Bullsworth. Good morning. Good. <laughs> that, that mask gets in the way every now and then, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when you're after those offensive linemen, it's good to hold on to it, right? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bullsworth, what are you most famous for? I am famous for being the greatest walk-on in college football. Walk-on means a person that does not have a scholarship but wants to try out for the team. And um, were, who are some famous people that you may have met or lived during your life? Bill Clinton was the president when I was in college, who had also been the former governor of Arkansas. And what character trait would you say best describes you? Driven, because when I was a kid, I dreamed of being an Arkansas Razorback. And it wasn't easy, but that, my go that goal was achieved in college. Well, congratulations on achieving that goal. Um, what uh, obstacles did you have to overcome along the way? When I was a kid, I wasn't very good at football. So, I, so when I first started playing football, I wasn't very good. So I spent most of the time on the sideline. But with hard work and a big growth spurt, I started to get to play more often. And uh, do you have a story that you would like to share with us today? Yes. I was known for the Burl's way, which meant to do his right even when no one is looking. In 1999, the Indianapolis Colts drafted me with their 63rd pick. And fortunately, I died in a car accident and never got to play. Well, thank you so much for showing us all the Burl's way. Uh, that is a, a great legacy for you to leave behind. She journeyed with her family across the Wild West. When she was older, she wrote books about her adventures. And the answer is, who is Laura Ingalls Wilder. Good morning, Miss Wilder. Good morning. So what are you most famous for? I'm most famous for being the author of the book series Little House on the Prairie. And uh, were you able to meet any famous people or any famous people lived during your lifetime? <laughs> Ellen G. White was alive at the same time I was, but I didn't meet anyone. Okay. I guess being out there in the wilderness is hard to meet people, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Disciplined. And why disciplined? I showed discipline by successfully balancing my life experience as a wife, mother, teacher, and author. You had many hats, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, did you have to overcome any obstacles being out in the wilderness? Well, I actually overcame several obstacles. When Rose was a baby, we lost our crop from the heat, and then, sadly, we lost our second baby, a boy, shortly after his birth. Lastly, a little house caught on fire. We lost almost everything. I cannot imagine overcoming all those obstacles. 
Do you have a story that you would like to share with us? Yes. After Almanzo died, I stayed busy and wasn't lonely. I love visitors. I even invited the fourth grade class from the Mansfield School to a party at my farmhouse. I baked them cookies and told them stories. Did you bake us any cookies for today? No, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sure those were wonderful cookies. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for sharing your stories about your journeys on out in the wilderness and for the Little House on the Prairie. Thank you for having me. And now time for round four. He was an American pioneer and frontiersman whose exploits made him one of the first folk heroes of the United States. And the answer is, who was Daniel Boone? Well, Daniel Boone, I hear you're the man. Yes. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about why are you so famous? I'm famous for being a politician of Virginia, exploring Kentucky when it wasn't part of the U.S., and making the Wilderness Road Trail through the Appalachian Mountains. Quite the accomplishments. Uh, were you able to meet any other famous people? George Washington, and the reason why I fought in a small war called the French and Indian War, and I was the head of a wagon train. A wagon train is a group of wagons that stay together to stay safe, uh, to stay safe that hold supplies, and George Washington was the colonel. And he went on to have quite the successful career, didn't he? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, what are some character traits that uh, would best describe you? Adventurous, because I explored Kentucky in many places in the wilderness. And do you have an interesting story you would like to share with us? Yes. When I was five, my twin sister and me, when we couldn't go outside because a neighbor had smallpox. So in the middle of the night, we snuck out and we slept in the person's bed. And then in the morning when we came back to our house, we had smallpox so we could go outside. I don't believe I've ever heard anybody want to catch smallpox. So, but thank you for your, um, all your adventures and all of, you, all of your explorations uh, that opened up the West for us. So it's been a pleasure having you today. It's been a pleasure to be here. He is known as the best hockey player ever. And the answer is, who is Wayne Gretzky? So Mr. Gretzky, what are you most famous for? Well, I am most famous for being known as the best hockey player in the world. I have scored a total of 1,016 goals and 2,203 assists. I am the all-time points and assist leader in the NHL. I am also the all-time goal scorer in the NHL. So we are in the presence of the GOAT this morning. Uh, who are some famous people that you met along the way? Well, some famous people I know are Eddie Mio, he, he is my mentor, a professional hockey player, and my best friend. I also know Janet Jones, who is a famous American actress, who is also my wife. And uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Well, I, a character trait that I would describe myself as is motivated. I always have pushed my limits and played from 8 in the morning till 10 at night. That's a long day of play, huh? Yes. Uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome? Well, one of the hardest obstacles I had to overcome was my dad, Walter, dying. He was the reason I practiced every day and the reason why I motivated myself. 
and probably the reason why I became the best hockey player in the world. How I overcame that is I kept practicing because that's what he would have wanted me to do. And do you have a story that you'd like to share with us? Yes, I do. At the age, at the age of 10, I scored 378 goals in a season. I thought our team should celebrate because of that, but then their parents started getting jealous and calling me a puck hog. By the age of 13, there was so much pressure, pressure I considered quitting hockey. But then the next year, my parents arranged me to move to Toronto and play. Well, we're so glad that you decided to continue playing. And, um, and, and it's been a pleasure to be able to watch you out there on the ice. So thank you for joining us this morning. And it's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. He explored the Antarctic and was an amazing leader. And the answer is, who is Sir Ernest Shackelford? Good morning, Mr. Shackelford. Good morning. Welcome. You've got to be hot in that, in that outfit. I sort of am. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're so famous. I am known for leading three expeditions to Antarctica. One of my most famous expeditions was when my ship, the Endurance, got trapped in the ice, and I had spent two years in Antarctica with my 27 men. I am actually famous for leading, for being like a good leader, because many other people who tried to explore Antarctica, they all died. None of my men died. Now, well, that is the sign of a good leader. Um, what character trait would you say best describes you? I have lots of character traits. Adventurous, brave, curious, but I think the best character trait that describes me is trustworthy. Because when I was back in Antarctica, there were lots of dangerous things that could have happened to me and my men. And as I said, all my men survived. What obstacles did you have to overcome? I had to overcome spending like being in Antarctica for about two years and having to eat seals and penguins. And I also had to survive blizzards, hurricanes, ice, hardly any food. Yeah, lots of dangerous things. Uh, do you have a story that you'd like to share with us this morning? Yes. So, y you know when you're going on an like, epic journey you need lots of supplies, right? Yes. So when I was packing up, I went to different countries to get supplies. And when I got to Argentina, I like was packing supplies. And then my friend, Frank, brought a boy. And he said, this guy snuck into the ship. So then I told him that he was going to be like working with the chef. And then I told him. If everything goes wrong, you're going to be the first one that will eat. And that was a joke, okay? I'm glad that was a joke. I, I couldn't imagine eating one of my crewmen. <laughs> yeah. Guess well, what? Yeah. Did you know that I brought a cat on my expedition to Antarctica? You didn't eat the cat, did you? No. Oh, okay. I don't even think he tastes good. Okay. So did the cat survive? No, he didn't. Uh, well, I'm glad that you survived. I'm glad all you men survived. And um, it's been truly an honor to have you here with us this morning to share your stories. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. She was hit in the face with a rock at the age of nine. 
And the answer is, who was Ellen White? Good morning, Miss White. Good morning. What are you most famous for? I'm famous for being a founder member of the SDA Church. I wrote over 80 books that were published. My most famous ones are Steps to Christ, Desire of Ages, and Great, The Great Controversy. Oh, those I, are wonderful books. I promoted and established many medical centers. The most known are Andrews University and Loma Linda Medical Center. Wonderful universities. Yeah. Um, who are uh, some other famous people that you knew? I also knew and married James Springer's White, which was a founder member of the SDA Church. Other famous church members I knew are Jane Harvey and John Kellogg. Ah, uh, yes. Um, that Kellogg name is a famous name, isn't it? Uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Warm-hearted. I gave things that people were in need of. Young girls in need of clothes, I invited them into my house to pick fabric to make themselves a dress. I like showing kindness towards others by helping them. I'm sure they appreciated that kindness. Uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome? When I was nine years old, I was walking home with my sisters from school when a classmate threw a rock, that rock hit my face and left me in a coma for weeks. During that time, I felt discouraged and my father talked to me about trusting in God and remembering that he loves me. And do you have a story you'd like to share with us? Yes. During that time, I knew that God was with me and he was caring for me and my last and at the end of my life my last words were I know in whom I have believed and I did my whole life. Well, we are glad that you have shared your faith with so many and we're glad that you've been here with us this morning to share your story. We thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. He wrote about Charlie Brown and Snoopy in a cartoon called The Peanuts. And the answer is, who is Charles Schultz? And he had a deadline to meet today, so he could not join us. Um, I do like a quote that he gave us. He says, all you need is love. But a little chocolate now and then doesn't hurt. I, I think we can all agree with that. She is an English primatologist and anthropologist. And the answer is, who is Jane Goodall? I see you brought a guest with you this morning. Okay. So, Miss Goodall, what are you most famous for? I'm a famous anthropologist and primatologist. I am an advocate for animals. My work is about helping animals by learning more about them. I love animals, and I do not want them to be hurt in any way. 
Uh, we all love animals. Uh, well, most of us love animals, yeah. Uh, who are some famous people other than animals that you knew? <laughs> I have met the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth. I also met the famous scientist Louis Leakey and President Bill Clinton. I am friends with Leonardo DiCaprio because he likes animals too. Hmm. Well, we have m both met the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth. We have that in <laughs> common. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? A character trait that best describes me is curiosity. How curious was I? Well, when I was young, I wanted to see how eggs were made. So I waited patiently and quietly in the hen house all day until I finally saw a hen lay an egg. The trouble with this was that my family didn't know I was in the hen house and thought I was lost and called the police. I finally came home and told them all about my discovery, and they were relieved. I'm sure they were relieved, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome? In 1952, my parents got divorced. That was sad because I didn't get to spend much time with my father. Also, when I was young, I lived through World War II. That was scary. Once at the beach, my family heard a gun and we barely escaped. We almost get hit by a bomb. We ran away to safety and escaped. Sounds like some harrowing moments there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a story you'd like to share with us? Yes. I am famous for my work with chimpanzees in Gombe National Park. I did not do research in the usual way. Instead of taking animals to the lab for study, I went into the jungle and watched how chimpanzees behave in their own home. I discovered that chimpanzees used tools to get food and have wars with other chimpanzees. Before this, everyone thought that only humans too use tools. I changed how scientists defined humans. Not everything was easy about doing research on the continent of Africa. I got sick with malaria. Malaria is caused by being bitten by female Anopheles mosquito. Malaria hurts the liver and blood cells. You could see how that would make me feel sad. I am still working for animals today, and I said I will not retire until I am dead, and I'm already 88 years old. Well, we wish you another 88 years of working with animals. And thank you for your love for animals, and thank you for sharing your story with us this morning. That'd be really old. Yeah. He was the 35th president of the United States of America. And the answer is, who was John F. Kennedy? Welcome. So what are you most famous for? I am most famous for being the 35th president of the United States. I'm a strong supporter of the civil rights movement and I help launch a space race. And who are some famous people that you have known? I met Queen Elizabeth II, Martin Luther King Jr., and the Pope. That's quite the, the trifecta there. Uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Bravery, because during World War II, a Japanese destroyer <laughs> rammed into my PT-109 boat, and it was split in two. Three of my men died on impact. I clinched the lifeless strap of my survivor, and I swam to a nearby island. I was able to communicate with some natives, and we found our way back. I'm glad you found your way back. Um, what obstacles have you had to overcome? An obstacle I had to overcome was my bad back. I was not able to do swim team or football, two things I love the most. But that did not stop me from being who I am today. Uh, do you have a story that you would like to share with us this morning? Yes. 
In my childhood, me and my family would go blueberry picking. One time when we went, it was a disaster. My brother, Joe Jr., had mosquito bites, and I had sat on an anthill. We never went again. That sounds like a fun blueberry picking trip. So, well, thank you for uh, overcoming your obstacles, and thank you for all of your hard work in being our 35th president. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. And now we'll take our first commercial break. Um, at this time, I understand that we have some young ones that need to get back to their classroom. And it's you know, been my tradition that I take questions from the audience while we're having a commercial break. So guys, it's your turn to ask the questions. Uh, did you ever do vandalism or something wrong? Did I ever do vandalism or something wrong? Um, now, you got to understand, I am the perfect Alex Trebek, so I do nothing wrong. However, uh, my wife and I, we visited Wuthering Heights, and uh, because my favorite movie is the Wuthering Heights, Emily Bronte. And while we were there, I did take a rock and carve our initials on the side of the barn. Uh, so, yes, I am guilty of vandalism. So, any other questions? Do you like your show? Do I like my show? Um, I have been honored to be the host of uh, Jeopardy since 1984, and I love my work. Uh, I once considered going into acting, and I talked to a few actor friends of mine, and when I realized how much work and time they had to put into being an actor, I decided that I was in the perfect job for me. We uh, record our shows over two days, two 11-hour days, and then I'm off the rest of the week. And I make a pretty good living doing what I'm doing, so yes, I love my job. Who are some of the people who have been on your show? Who are some of the people that have been on my show? Uh, not as a guest, but as a, um, not as a contestant, but as a guest reading the questions, I have had the honor of having President Bill Clinton and President Jimmy Carter uh, to make guest appearances on our show doing some reading. So those are probably the two most famous, uh, but the, probably the most famous contestant is Ken Jennings, who is now one of the hosts of our show. One more question. Do you like yourself? Do I like myself? You know, other than my wife, Jean, I think I like myself the best. Uh, so. Yes, I think it's important to like yourself, but to also to realize our own shortcomings, our own limitations, and to be able to laugh at ourselves. Uh, never take yourself too seriously. Okay. okay, well now our commercial break is over, and we're going back to our show. We're ready for round five. And we're going to start out round five with our Yes, uh, our special guest, um, Mr. Jeffrey Locke. Good morning, Alex. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I'm not soccer Jeffrey? <laughs> soccer Jeffrey, okay. yeah. Uh, well, you look a little different today. Um, um, slightly. Yes. Uh, so I understand that you are new here to TLC Prep. That is correct. And uh, so could you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of history? Sure. Uh, how much time do I have? Um, I, think I was born on a uh, Sunday evening around 8 o'clock. No. Um, uh, formerly uh, taught in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I was really unique. I taught at our Adventist school there. Um, I got hired by the school three different times. Um, out of college, I interviewed for the job. I fell in love with New York City on a, 
on a on a work activity with the United Nations, and uh, and I went to the interview, and they hired me, and I worked there for about ten years. And uh, my wife was working on her career in New York City, and we decided to put everything in storage and travel around the world, and we did. We stopped off in Africa. We were missionaries there for about six months, helped building some churches. I was able to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I, unfortunately, I did come down with malaria. I survived. Um, and when I got back, uh, my predecessor who took my job didn't work out, so I applied for it, and I got the job. That was my second time at it. Well, after we'd done our traveling, we decided to start a family. And one came along, and another one came along. And when uh, my wife was pregnant with the third one, and a terrible thing happened in New York, 9-11, and we had a nanny taking care of our three kids. And uh, I did the math, and I figured out that I was paying some, I was clearing about $10 a week to have somebody spend 10 hours a day with my own kids. So I applied for the job, and I became a Mr. Mom. Uh, Manny and so my wife hired me and so I took care of our kids until the youngest one was ready to go to school and lo and behold the job was opening there at my former school and I applied and they hired me a third time and l lucky for me in that short stint of teaching there for 23 years I was able to teach alongside I had former students become teachers five of them one later became the actual principal who I served under and uh, it was good to see the growth of the school that was there. Well, they do say the third time is the charm. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I understand that you've had a couple of meetings with some famous people, maybe? Sure, sure. I, I shared a story with uh, the students yesterday about uh, meeting a uh, Secret Serviceman for, for President Bush. But I uh, also had another occasion where um, I was in uh, England, over in London, and we wanted to. Uh, we went to a Christmas service, and uh, the Queen uh, Elizabeth II was at the uh, Christmas service, and my wife was at the very edge of the aisle. I was right next to her, and they came right down the middle, and she stopped right in front of us, and she looked at me, and she said, Happy Christmas. The, the British say Happy Christmas instead of Merry Christmas. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to answer back or curtsy or bow, or I just kind of nodded my head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it seems like Queen Elizabeth is a common thread yeah. with, a, with a lot of our guests today. Mm -hmm. um, have you had to overcome any obstacles in your life? Uh, yes, I did. Believe it or not, I would, it was apparent when I was in third grade. I had a, a stu stu stuttering problem, and I got kind of teased about it or this or that. But I was a big enough kid that I wasn't teased too hard, but uh, still it was became an issue. And so I had to go to a special... Uh, language class, and then I was able to overcome stuttering. As my mom put it, my, my brain was moving uh, faster than my mouth, and my mouth was trying to catch up, and it couldn't. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's apparent that you overcame that obstacle. Yeah, yeah most days. Yes. <laughs> um, I see that, um, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did your wife say that you were diligent, or uh, is... Uh, <laughs> Combination. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm one of these guys that make a list. I like to do a list of all the things I like to try to get done. And, uh, and so I try to stick to it, get things done. Mm -hmm. Okay, students out there, that's, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a good lesson for you to learn. Make those lists. And there's, Mr. Locke, there's nothing quite as good as that feeling of marking I'm something marking off, off that list, mm -hmm. is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that your favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Yeah, I've got two favorite Bible verses. One was given to me by my mom, and one was by my dad. My dad's verse was uh, Matthew three seventeen about uh, son. I'm very proud of my son when uh, Jesus was baptized. And this was the one my mom would remind me. Once in a while, I did get myself in trouble, and uh, she would remind me, "Don't worry, you know, uh, God has a purpose for you." Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Locke, is there anything else that you would like to share before we move on to the rest of our program today? Mm, no. I've really enjoyed becoming a, a Virginian. Uh, my wife is, uh, 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 family has uh, land down in uh, a little south of here. And so moving from Buffalo, it's, uh, it's been great to become here and, and become and, a Virginian. And I understand there's a special story about that land, isn't there? Yeah, it just so happens that... Uh, um, they were uh, landowners down there across the street from a gentleman you're going to see in a few minutes from P 
Patrick Henry, uh, they were neighbors nearby in Hanover County. Um, uh, they had the land there, and we were able to buy a small 10-acre farm right across the street from uh, the in-laws. And that land was a land grant from? Land grant from King George himself. And from so King George. Right. So that, they, that land goes back quite a ways. Goes back away. They've been yeah. able to hold it in the family. Yeah. They, and that, that's a major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah. Well, Mr. Locke, um, I know I speak on behalf of the, the faculty, the staff, the students, and the community here at TLC Prep. We are all very grateful that you are here with us, um, and we are honored to have you as part of our TLC prep family. Well, thank you. It's the first time I had an interview and wearing a dress, so it's kind of. Um, you have the legs for it. Yeah, thank so. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Alex. Good job. <laughs> He was an American attorney, planter, politician, and orator, known for making a very famous statement in one of his speeches. And the answer is, who is Patrick Henry? So, Mr. Henry, what are you most famous for? Uh, I'm most famous for my speech, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. I was also a founding father, and I helped make the Constitution, and I also signed it. Oh, very good. Um, who are some other famous people that you know? I knew Samuel Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and... I'm sure that you knew everyone that put their signatures on that document, didn't you? Uh, yeah. So um, what character trait would you say best describes you, Mr. Henry? Uh, I would say brave because if when I said my speech in court, I could have been executed my family, and my family could have lost all their money and family members could have also been executed. So yes, that was a very brave thing to do. What obstacles did you have to overcome? Uh, I had two obstacles. I couldn't find a, jo a job as a young adult, and I suffered from s stomach cancer. I did not know you had stomach cancer. Um, so do you have a special story that you would like to share with us? Um, I did start the f American fight of independence. Well, you know, we are so grateful for you all, that group of people that took that stand to, to start our journey on to independence. So thank you for, for your sacrifices and thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. In 2017, she was named the first ever National Youth Poet Laureate. And the answer is, who is Amanda Gorman? Good morning, Ms. Gorman. Good morning. So who is Amanda Gorman and why are you so famous? I'm Amanda Gorman, and I'm famous because I was the first young poet to deliver a poetry at the inaugur inauguration at Joe Biden's. I, I remember watching you uh, at that inauguration. You did a wonderful job. Uh, who are some other famous people that you knew? I've met Joe Biden, and I've been in an interview with Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama. So what character trait would you say best describes you? Confidence. I shared an important lesson on how to share hope and resolve. And you do look very confident, I must say. Thank you. Um, what obstacles have you had to overcome in your young life? I had to overcome 
being in an environment with my mom raising me by herself and limited TV access and a poor life. Um, do you have a special story that you would like to share with us this morning? Yes, I would like to read The Ford by Oprah Winfrey, and I would like to thank her for making this for me. They don't come very often. These moments are in cadence where the welter of pain and suffering gives way to hope, maybe even joy, where a deep distress that has dodged our souls and shaken our faith, so difficult to articulate and even harder to bear, is transformed into something clear and poor, where wisdom flows in cadence that sinks with the thumb of our blood, the beat of our hearts, where the grace of in peace and human f form take the measure seen where we've been and where we must go lighting the way with our with our words she exactly what we'd been waiting for this skinny black girl descended from slaves showing us our true selves our human heritage our heart everyone who watched came away and enhanced with hope and marveling at seeing the best of who we are and who we can be through the eyes of incense of a 22-year-old, our country's youngest presidential inaugural, inaugural poet. As her words washed over us, they healed our wounds and res resurrected our spirits. A nation bruised but whole climbed up off his knees and finally a miracle we felt the sun pierced the never-ending shade that is the power of poetry, poetry, and that is the power we collectively witnessed at the inauguration of President Joseph R. Biden on January 20th, 2021, the day Amanda Gorman proudly, profoundly presenting her fullest, most radiant self rose to the microphone in the moment, giving us the gift of the hill we climb. Well, thank you so much for sharing those words with us. And I see you have a few books here with you. Yes, I have Call Us What We Carry poems. Mm -hmm. And I have Change Shangs, a children's anthem. Well, thank you for sharing your talents with us. And it's been a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And her books are also available right down the street at our local Barnes & Noble. The United States Congress has honored her as the First Lady of Civil Rights and the mother of the Freedom Movement. And the answer is, who is Rosa Parks? Good morning, Ms. Parks. Good morning. Uh, who are you and why are you so famous? I'm famous because I took a stand while sitting down, which led to the Montgomery bus boycott that sparked the civil rights movement, making me known as the first lady of civil rights. Well, thank you for taking that stand and keeping your seat. Sure. <laughs> so who are some famous people that you knew? A famous person that lived in my lifetime was Martin Luther King Jr. I even got to meet him. And we got to know each other as the bus boycott progressed. I was even honored in his famous I Have a Dream speech. Mm, what an honor. Yeah. Uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Well, I'd say a character trait that best describes me is brave. Because in 1955, I said no when a bus driver ordered me to get, ordered me to give up my seat to a white man knowing I could go to jail for it. Mm. Um, what obstacles did you have to overcome? I was born in 1913 in Montgomery, Alabama during the Jim Crow days. Jim Crow is a system of segregation laws and unwritten code about how us blacks were to be treated in the South, and it was not nice. Yes, I, um, I am truly sorry that those laws ever existed. Uh, do you have an interesting story that you want to share with us this morning? 
Yes, I do. Um, my grandparents were formerly enslaved people. And let me see if I can remember here. Um, yes, I remember one time my grandpa would stand outside with a shotgun while the KKK marched right on by. Wow, I cannot imagine that. Um, well, I, again, I am just so honored to have you here on our show this morning. And uh, thank you for all that you did to right the wrongs and to um, start the, uh, the freedom movement. Yeah, I got to do Civil my part, you know. Uh, we yeah. all have to, don't we? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. He is the inventor of the light switch. And the answer is, who is John Henry Holmes? Well, Mr. Holmes, welcome. So what are you most famous for? Well, as you said, I am famous for inventing the light switch. And before I invented the light switch, it was very dangerous because the light bulb, when you had to use it, it was dark and you had to use wires, so you might have electrocuted yourself. But with my curation, it was a little bit more safer. Yes, and thank you for that. Um, what are some famous people that you may have known or lived during your lifetime? A person that lived in my lifetime is Thomas Edison. And that reminds me, I have a story to tell about him later. Well, I look forward to that story. Mm -hmm. um, what character trait would you say best describes you? Well, my re well, my religion is a Quaker, so many people say that my character trait is com is compassionate because I looked out for kids because I think no, I know kids are our future. Uh, yes, indeed, they are. Um, what obstacles did you have to overcome? It took many tries to get the light switch correctly because it did not look like it looked now in these modern times. It looked like a lever that you would have to pull so it was a little bit more bigger. But with the support of my family, I curated the light switch. Well, you've had us on the edge of our seats. What is that story you want to share with us? The story that I wanted to tell was in, in 1880, Thomas Edison created the light bulb and that inspired me an electric light to correct, to make the light switch. And so I began my journey. And four years later, eight, 1884, I created the light switch. Well, again, I, I know in the middle of the night, I am very thankful for that light switch. So uh, thank you for all your hard work and determination to, to create that for us. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us and sharing your story this morning. Thank you for having me here. He is a famous astronomer who discovered four moons of Jupiter. And the answer is, who is Galileo Galilei? Well, good morning, Mr. Galilei. Uh, good morning. So what are you most famous for? I'm f most famous for making a better design for the telescope, discovering the four, four moons of Jupiter, as you said, and the rings of Saturn. So were you able to meet, or what other famous people lived during your lifetime? A famous person that lived during my lifetime was Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer, mathematician, astrologer, natural philosopher, and writer of music. And what character trait would you say best describes you? The character trait that best described me would be determined. Uh, 
I was so determined to the point I was considered stubborn because I always got in trouble with the church. And it's tough when you're in trouble with the church, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome? Uh, an obstacle that I had to overcome was being accused of heresy by the church. Uh, I had to go under house arrest for eight years. Wow, I can't imagine being in the house for eight years. Um, do you have a story that you'd like to share with us this morning? Yes. Um, I was actually a college dropout. I was forced to leave the university I was learning at because I had no money. Well, I can see that um, dropping out, you were able, able to overcome that and give us lots of great contributions. So thank you so much for your time this morning. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and to hear your story. Thank you for having me. And now round six. He was the first African-American to play Major League Baseball in the 20th century. And the answer is, who is Jackie Robinson? Well, good morning, Mr. Robinson. Welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so what are you most famous for? I brought the color bearer in baseball, become the first African American to play in the major league in 1947. I was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers, what I have in my hat right here. Yeah, and uh, that was a great team that you were on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, who are some other famous people that you knew? I knew President Ford, mm -hmm. a good guy, yeah. Yeah, he was a good guy, yeah. <laughs> and Had a little trouble with stairs, but he was a real good guy. Yeah, yeah. so weird. Yeah. But uh, I met Commissioner Happy Chandler, he mm -hmm. was baseball commissioner. Absolutely. And a uh, Jewish baseball player named Hank Greenberg, mm -hmm. nice guy too. Yes, he was, yeah. He could hit that ball, couldn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what character trait would you say best describes you? Um, hopeful. Mm -hmm. so I, ho I was hopeful that I made history and I mm, did all of these awesome things. And I was hopeful that I could play baseball. That was, yeah. that was a, a major accomplishment for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure breaking the color barrier, being the first African-American, that you had some obstacles to overcome. Can oh, you yeah. share those with us? Yeah. I had um, racial discrimination from some white food. I didn't let me be eat where my friends were and didn't let me sleep where my friends were. I felt like I was alone, a lone wolf, mm -hmm. drafted off on the sunlight. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad that you had that core group of people to give you your support. Um, yeah. So... Do you have a special story you'd like to share with us? Yeah, always. Always. Yeah. I was an officer in the Army, but I thought they were treating black strong. Mm -hmm. And I argued about that. And I, I got in a fight, and I gave him that one-two, if you know what I'm saying. I, I hear and you. <laughs> yeah, and they tried to. Uh, I understand you were yeah, court-martialed yeah. for court that. Court-martialed, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. And how did that turn out? No, I left. You left, okay. And but did, did I, I wasn't a quitter. No, no, no. No quitter. I, I think you had a better option to go to? Yeah, yeah. to play that? baseball. To play I baseball. wasn't good at the first, but I got good. Yes. And became a professional. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even today, your number 42 is mm -hmm. retired with every major league team. And yeah. So that, that's quite the honor that they have bestowed on you. Yeah. Uh, but we really appreciate you and your your hopefulness to to take each day at a time and to live it the best that you could, 
and to set that example and to break that color barrier. Uh, Major League Baseball is better because you were a part of it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You need your bat boy, don't you? Yeah. He was a Spanish painter, sculptor, and ceramicist, ceramicist born in Barcelona. And the answer is, who was Joan Miro? And he was unable to join us today. She is a Jamaican-American former track and field athlete who competed internationally for the United States, primarily in the 400-meter sprint. And the answer is, who was Sonia Richards-Ross? My name is Sonia Richards-Ross, and I'm a retired Jamaican-American track and field athlete who was famous for winning several Olympic medals and being the best 400 meter, meter runner in the world. During, during my career, I was undefeated and I suffered many injuries. I was born February 26, 1985. And at the age of 12, I moved to the United States in Florida and gained interest in running at the age of seven. I graduated St. Thomas Aquinas High School in 2002. During my time there, I participated in basketball and tr track, track and field events and won a silver medal at the 400 meter relay race. Um, after high school, I enrolled in the University of Texas and in Austin and was a student there from 2002 to 2005. There I won many races. Um, I participated in the Summer Olympics and won gold. I married Aaron Ross, who was a, a former American, former American football cornerback. And as a kid, I wanted to to join Team USA, so I, and participate in the 400 meter race. I so I begged my parents to join, but it was a tough decision to make because I was Jamaican and wanted to to play for team team USA. So the the year I joined the team, the World Junior Championships were hosted in Kingston, Jamaica. It was difficult for me because it was difficult difficult for me because I was because the Jamaican audience booed me and called me a traitor. I, I lost the 400 meter final and that was the first time I lost a race because I was known for being undefeated. I was determined because I kept running after suffering a terrible toe injury. I returned to my last, to my last um, 400 meter race and after the 2016 Olympic Games, I retired. He was a French civil engineer. And the answer is, who was Gustav Eiffel?
Hello, my name is Gustave Eiffel. I was born December 15, 1832 in Dijon, France. When I was a boy, I would spend a lot of times with my siblings seeing boats get loaded and unloaded. After that, we would go to school and censure this art in France. After some years, I graduated in 1855. After that, I got a degree in metal constructing, and my first achievement achievement was the Bordiax Bridge. Three of my best achievements were the Maria Pia Bridge and the Statue of Liberty in the Eiffel Tower. I was known I'm known for building the Eiffel Tower. I started to build it, and then two years later, I finished it. My character trait is perseverance because I persevered to build the Eiffel Tower. When I finished. When I finished, I saw the tower was very famous, so I said, I ought to be jealous of my tower. She is more famous than I am. After that, I got married, but my wife died sadly 15 years later. So my oldest daughter, Clary, had to stay with the, her younger sibling. She had to cook and clean and take care of the house. So when I got home, I would be able to eat. After that, sadly, on December 25th, I got a disease. But I had to deal with that for one year, and then I died on December the 25th. Thank you. After graduating from France's Naval Academy in 1933, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant. And the answer is... Who was Jacques Cousteau? Hi, my name is Jacques Cousteau, and nobody loved exploring the ocean more than me. I dedicated 40 years of my life to sea exploration and sea exploration and categorizing life below the sea. I was born on June 11th, 1910, and I was born to Daniel and Elizabeth Castell, and I also had a little brother named Antone Castell. Um, my dad worked for uh, a famous business owner named Eugene Higgins, and often we used to go to one of his waterfront properties, and there I got accustomed to the oceans. Uh, in 1920, uh, we moved to New York cause because my dad had to work for Eugene Higgins and help him with some stuff there. During my time in the USA, I went to Vermont, and there, there was a little camp, and I stayed there for a while, and often I usually swam in like the lake and improved my swimming skills. The camp counselor noticed this, and I he gave me a task to pick up all the sticks from the bottom of the, from the, bottom of the lake. At the age of 13, we moved back to France, and I bought a motion picture camera and began making movies with my family. At the age of 14, I was not doing very well in school, and I was being disrespectful and not focusing on my studies, and I got kicked out because I was throwing rocks at windows, and they broke. So I went, so since I couldn't go back to the high school there, I went to a military-style academy and they straightened me out there and they turned me into an excellent student and dedicated to my studies. After graduation in 1929, I wanted to join the military to experience traveling, so after passing extraordinarily difficult exams, I joined in 1933. There I was stationed in the best northern coast of France and Oh, and I traveled the world as a gunnery, and I took my motion picture camera just in case I wanted to record something. Sadly, my career ended. My career in the military ended because I had a tragic accident where I broke both of my arms, and to regain strength in my arms, I had to swim in the Mediterranean Sea every single day until I regained strength. But while I was performing that task, I realized that I wanted to explore the ocean and venture across all of the seas. So I did that. And after I regained strength in my arms, I, w I married Simone 
Melchior in 1937, and we had two children, Jean Michael and Felipe. Sadly, Simone died at the age of 90. Two years later, I married Francina Triplett, and we had, we had a daughter and a son. I was a famous oceanographer, and I have made many inventions that have helped with sea exploration, and my most famous one was the aqualung, which allowed people to dive in the ocean for long periods of time and explore the sea. I'm also uh, a filmmaker, a television star, a scientist, a writer, a researcher. I've done a lot of things. One of my, in one of my movies, I demonstrated a new type of fishing called dynamite fishing, where you just throw dynamite in the ocean and all the fish die. And then you just go in, dive, and collect all the fish. I also made two documentaries, one being Meters Deep and Shipwrecks. I also have a TV series named The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. And it's just a series like on like the ocean and like stuff. Most of my movies were like about like oceans and like life at sea and stuff like that. Uh, I met some famous people. Like I said, my dad worked for Eugene Higgins, who he was a famous American business owner, and Emile Gagnon. She helped me develop the Aqualung in 1934. My son, Gene Michael, he he followed in my st footsteps, and he became a well-known marine biologist, and he's very successful today. Um, I acquired the Calypso in 1950, and this man named Harold Edgerton, he helped me like outfit it and like decorate it, and like we put surveillance cameras and a bunch of equipment in there. But he is a famous inventor, and he created the strobe light, and uh, the strobe light helped revolutionize photography, military surveillance, science, Hollywood filmmaking, and the media. It was not hard. It was hard for me to pursue my dreams since I broke both of my arms, which I mentioned before, and maps were not very accurate, and science was not as advanced as it is today. But I was a very smart individual, so like I always got to where I needed to be. But I would like others to be passionate about the ocean the same way I was. Thank you for having me. She was the founder of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And the, an the question is, or the answer is, who is Candy Leitner? Hi, my name is Candy Leitner, or Candace Leitner. I was born May 30th, 1946 in Pasadena, California. Um, I graduated high school. After I graduated high school, I went to American River College in Sacramento, California. Throughout my years of college, I met this man named Steve. Steve and I ended up getting married and having three wonderful children together. But then after a while, Steve and I ended up having our difficulties and got divorced. After my divorce with Steve, Steve and I needed, I became a real estate agent in Fair Oaks, California. I am most famous for becoming the founder of MAD. I made MAD because one day on May 3rd, 1980, my daughter Kari had been killed by a drunk driver and sadly passed away. Um... Once I heard that my daughter, Kari, had been killed, I decided that I needed to do something, and I decided that I made mad. Once the government heard why I made mad, he decided to raise legal drinking to the age of 21. I say that my obstacles I've been through is anger and depression. I was so angry in the press that I couldn't continue working, so I had to quit my job. I made a book about giving, about giving called Giving Sorrow Words, my book is about my son, my oldest son moving to Texas and my oldest daughter moving to New York. My oldest daughter had a feisty personality, but either way, I still loved her. But then something traumatic happened. My four-year-old son 
got hit, got ran over by a car and needed sur- needed surgeries. He broke his ribs and both of his legs. He re- he recovered thankfully from his surgeries. But to but unexpectedly, two months later, he died of a heart attack. I say that my most common character trait is confidence. I say that I'm most confident with my work, but also with my program. My program made me gain a habit of saying no to whenever I was afraid or whenever I just didn't want to do something. Thank you for having me. A film was made about him called Stand and Deliver. And the answer is, who it was? Jamie Escalante. Hello, my name is Jamie Escalante. I am a famous Bolivian math teacher who helped 15 students pass an AP calculus test. I was born in Bolivia, La Paz on December 31st, 1930. My parents were Sara and Senovio Escalante. They were both teachers, but due to my father's heavy drinking problem, my mother and my siblings eventually left him. At our new neighborhood, I would usually love to experiment with fire and other things. One day, I made a wooden car, and my sister, my sister Bertha was going to ride it. As soon as it was coming down, she fell out and flew into an open sewer. Thankfully, she came out unharmed, and thankfully, I came out unharmed. After, after going to middle school, I attended San Calixto Jesuit High School, where I had good grades and I was popular. Then, I attended Normal Superior College, where I met my spouse, Fabiola Tapia. We got married in November 1954, and we had two kids, Jamie Jr., who we called Jaimito, and Fernando. After teaching for Bolivia in 10 years, in the 1960s, we decided to move to America to seek a better life. There, I enrolled at Pasadena City College so I could get my teaching degree, so I could return to the classroom, and I had to learn English. While doing all of that, I was working as a cleaner at a restaurant. After I graduated, I, st- I started working at Garfield High School in 1974. There, I taught Hispanic students that came from poor neighborhoods that others thought were incapable of learning the material and incapable of learning. But I, they proved them wrong by passing the AP calculus test. All of them passed with, with, with good scores, but then a few months later, a letter arrived stating that they have cheated. I, couldn't, I protested because my, my students were Hispanic and they came from poor neighborhoods. Then I convinced 12 of my students to take the test again, and all 12 passed. After, after that, I mostly spent teaching my late, in my later years of life. My character trait is determined because I was determined to get a new degree while working at a restaurant. Some famous people that I knew were Ronald Reagan when he, when he awarded me the President's Medal of Excellence in Education in 1999 and Arnold Schwarzenegger when he came to visit my classroom once. I will now end with a quote. You do not enter the future, you create the future. Thank you for having me. She was the first African-American woman to get a pilot's license. And the answer is, who was Willa Beatrice Brown. It was an August morning, but I was in the air, but out of nowhere, I had grand chest. Pew, pew. And my, one of them hit one of my wings. My wing, one of the wings was so slowly falling to the floor. Hello, my name is Willa Beatrice Brown, and this is my story. 
I was born in Castle, Kentucky in 1906, and I graduated Indiana Te Northwestern Teachers College in 1927. I had an MBA in 1937. Um, there wasn't that much opportunities for African Americans like me back then, but then opportunities opened and I decided to be pilot. I trained to be a pilot with my teacher Cornelius Kofi, Cornelius Kofi that a few years later I married and then I divorced. Uh, before we divorced, we um, started a school of aeronautics, Cornelius Kofi School of Aeronautics. We helped 200, we, I taught 200 African American pilot air, uh, airmen to be pilots. I was nominated one of the most inspirational women. Um, today I see myself as a very inspirational woman and I want to help others be inspired by, my, by me and for them to inspire people like I did. Thank you for having me. He had a premonition of his most famous victory. And the answer is, who was Sitting Bull? Haniwaste, if you were part of my Lakota tribe, you would understand what I said. But let's get to the point. Hello, my name is Sitting Bull. I was born in 1831 near the Grand River, located in South Dakota. My parents named me Jumping Badger at birth because they either named their children from a vision or from the setting of birth. I gained my name Sitting Bull from a raid at age 14 for my bravery and leadership. My first kill of any mammal was a water buffalo or buffalo. I seemed to have a strong reputation for being a good leader. Some obstacles I overcame were being born Native American because we had to fight for our land and being forced on smaller reservations. I was in plenty of battles such as the Battle of Rosebud, the Battle of Kildare Mountain, and the Battle of Wounded Knee. But the Battle of Little Bighorn is the most famous one I've been in. I was. One of many character traits I have are loyalty because I stayed with my people to the end and I fought with them. My second character trait is hospitable because I would welcome any foreigners, to, but if they needed a place to stay, I would let them stay. My third character trait is spiritual. I was a very spiritual person. I always wanted peace, but if they wanted to fight, I would fight. I would soon pass away on December 15th, 1890 due to a gunshot wound to the leg. After my death, 150 Sioux men and women got massacred. My people value my successes greatly, resulting in victories. I obtained the Golden Eagle Feather, which, stand, which is a special achievement and stands for uh, having a greater spirit, strength, and power of all else. My legacy will live on forever, resulting in my family sharing stories on how I was a hunk papa who did lead his people throughout years of resistance against the U.S. policies. So let's drive together to discover what kind of life we can create for our children. Thank you for your time. He wasn't born blind, but he became blind. The answer is, who was Lewis Braille? Thank you, Mr. Trebek. Uh, just to make sure I am facing the right way, right? Uh, turn to your left. Oh. Yes, right there. 
Thank you. Hello, my name is Louis Brill, and as Mr. Trebek said, I was not born blind. Due to an accident when I was three, my father took me to a shop, and I was playing with a tool called an awl. When he was helping a customer, I was playing around with it and looking at it. All of a sudden, it slipped right from my hands and right into my eye. When my father heard my scream, he ran all the way to me and then rushed me as fast as he can to the hospital. The doctors wanted me to get a leech treatment, but my father said not to because due to my young age, it would be pretty hard to do the treatment. S two years after the incident, I became fully blind. The way I knew this was one day I just woke up. It was completely dark, so I decided to go back to sleep. But my parents woke me up saying, it's stay time. And I argued with them that it would, no, it's dark. It took them several hours to say that I was blind. When I finally understood that I was blind, my father made these poles all around town to help me get around. When I turned 10, I was accepted into the National Youth for Blind Kids in Paris. You would think that this wonderful school for blind kids would have books so they, they can read, but they did not, and I was very angry about that. They used a different system called the highway system, which is basically the auto. Uh, they would use it would you they would have someone read the book to you, and you would listen to them. And I was wanting to read the book myself, so me and my friends came up with an idea called the system Braille. I worked on any I worked on it any time I had my hands on it. It took five years to finally complete it, and then when I turned 15, I finally finished it, and that night I could not sleep. It was until the morning I finally got sleep because I was too tired. At the age of 28, I started teaching blind kids and not blind kids. I just had this one student. He did not understand most things I said. So I spent an hour to an hour or two hours a day trying to teach him. And once he finally understood it, I gave him a huge exam. If he got it, if he got it all correct, I would teach him about Braille, my system. But if he didn't, I wouldn't. I'll keep help, I would have kept helping him until he finally understood. But he aced that test 100% in that he did not get a single question wrong. So I started teaching him about Braille. And I spent an hour or two every day with him teaching him about Braille. And I had to leave my wonderful job of teaching at the age of, no, I had to leave my wonderful job of teaching due to tuberculosis, the lung disease. And I, and I finally died at the age of 43 on January 6, 1852, two days right after my birthday. Thank you for having me. He was a skilled engineer and inventor. The answer is, who was Alfred Nobel? Hello, my name is Alfred Nobel. You might recognize me for being the inventor of the Nobel Prizes or being the inventor of dynamite. But I would like to be recognized for my creativity in poetry and my love for science. I was born on October 21, 1833, when my parents had gone bankrupt because of my father 
who had many business failures. I had seven siblings, and because we were poor, only three of them had survived until adulthood. I went to St. Jacob's School, and I, at the age of 17, I had learned how to speak five languages fluently, and I was proficient in history, I'm sorry, science, and poetry. This is where I discovered my love for poetry. Every single day, I would try to write a new poem, but when I had sadly got older, I had stopped because I was trying to work. This is when I started my experiments with dynamite. See, dynamite, before I made it better, dynamite was a container with blasting liquid and a blasting cap on top and it was highly explosive and very hard to move around. When my brother had died because of this explosion, uh, because of this dynamite, I knew I had to make it better. By mixing sand with this blasting liquid, it would create this uh, explosive mixture if you can put a, you can put it in a cylinder uh, container and put the blasting cap on top, so when you light it, it will give you a minute or two to run or walk away. I had died, when I had died, in my will, I had created the Nobel Prizes. And it wasn't originally called the Nobel Prizes, only after it was known. Uh, thank you for having me. And now for final Jeopardy. He was the first, he was in the first cavalry division parachute regiment. And the answer is, who was Rick Rascorla? Hello. It's not really a wonderful day, but it's, it's reminding me of um, that day, September 11, 2001. Everybody was minding their own business, and I remember I was in my office doing my own business, until suddenly, boom, an airplane hit the South Tower, or the North Tower, I was in the South. I was looking through my office window, and saw all that, that airplane burning in the tower, I I remember I was I was panicking, everybody was panicking. So I started evacuating since I was the in charge of all the security. I was um I was evacuating going up and down all over the building and then boom another plane hit. It was on our tower this time. I'm not I'm I wasn't sure if anybody got hit because I I was evacuating lots of people. When I got down to the bottom, I went back to check if there was any more people, like employee staff in the building. And then I got knocked out by something, but don't remember what. My name is Rick Rascola. I was born May 27, two, no, 1939, by my single mom and grandparents. I always had a dream when I was little about going to the military and kept that dream for a long time. I left to the USA and joined the military. I was in the second second battalion of the first cavalry division. I left the, I left the military when I when I reached the position of col colonel. I went to the um, Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma to m study more as a security guard in Britain in my early days. I. I got employed at the Royal Trade Center for Morgan Stanley. I got I got married to Susan Greer and we had I had we had two kids and I and had three stepkids. And that's all I have for today. Hopefully you have a re good rest of your day.
she is well known for her record-breaking trip around the world. And the answer is, who is Nellie Bly? The nights were cold, the, the food was scarce, the, the screaming next door. Hi, my name is Nellie Bly, also known as Elizabeth Co Cochran. I changed my name because as a female writer at the time, it wasn't right for a woman to write under her own name. I had a job to be a reporter for the Pittsburgh Dispatch, and I got paid $5 per week. When I snuck into Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum, I had, I had to pretend like I was crazy and I had to scream as if I was crazy. And I was born May, May 5th, 1864 in Cochrane Mills, Pennsylvania. My father, Michael Cochrane, was the founder of my hometown. Growing up, I was surrounded by toxic suicidal women. My father has sadly died from heart failure. Later I was enrolled into Indiana Normal School, but my father's death caused my family financial de detriment. I was inspired by Jules Verne's novel Around the World. This His novel inspired me to beat the world record of traveling around the world in under 80 days. When I was in the asylum, I had to be very careful and, and very wise. I had to, I had to pretend to, I had to pretend to be crazy and I had to do very uncomfortable things. I was, I had to step out of my comfort zone and and my my character trait traits are diligent because I kept on because I beat the world record of traveling around the world in in seventy two days and and I was I was also selfless because I because I had to do a lot of uncomfortable things in the asylum and I had to watch a lot of horrible things that happened inside and I was also determined because I kept on going even though after all of the things that I saw in the asylum thank you for listening He led Britain in World War II as conservative prime minister from 1940 to 1945. And the answer is, who was Winston Churchill? Hello, my name is, my name is Winston Churchill. I was born November 30th in 1874. My mother was Jenny Jerome, and my father, my father was Randolph Churchill. I also had a brother named Jack Churchill. When I was growing up, I lived in Blenheim Palace, and I went to St. George's School for elementary, middle, and high school, and was eighth best in my class. After that, I spent three years in Harrow School to join the military, and eventually I became a... Calvary, Calvary unit in 1893. After that, I became second lieutenant and I went home and moved to Oxfordshire and married my wife Clementine and had five kids. After that, I went back to military and Chamberlain resigned, making me prime minister. and I led multiple troops in World War I and World War II, 
and after that I went home and found out I had nine grandchildren and I unfortunately died January 24 in 1965. Thank you for having me. He was the first African American to have a national park named after him. And the answer is, who was George Washington Carver? Hello, my name is George Washington Carver. I was born 1864. I was born into slavery in 1864 but only years later after um, Abraham Lincoln abolished it. As me, my mother, and my brother Jim were looking for a place to stay, my mom got kidnapped, but me and my brother were, Jim were able to escape and we went to our aunt's and uncle's place. That's where I spent most of my childhood. At the age of 11, I decided that I wanted to go to school, but the only school for African Americans like me was far away. So I had to go far away. Um, that night on the way to the school, I slept in a barn. Um, and that morning that I woke up, a nice lady decided to allow me to stay with her as long as I helped did chores and helped her clean. It was hard because I was a small kid and most of the kids older were older than me at the school. Years later, I decided to go to Tux G University and that's where I got three, deg three degrees for science. I decided to come back to be an architectural scientist. I met Teddy Roosevelt and Gandhi for my, because of my inventions with the peanuts. Some um, obstacles I had was being African American and at my job and, uh, and all my inventions. Um, I'm grateful because all the things that God gave to me. And my quote is, there is no shortcut to achievements. Life requires through preparations, vendors, isn't worth anything. It's not the style of the clothes one wears, neither the kind. It has been a pleasure to host the biography tea here at TLC Prep. And our distinguished guest, it's been, let's give them one more hand. And I understand that your teachers want you to uh, gather for class pictures at the bio T sign. So please stay just like you are and uh, be ready for that picture. Um, it's been a pleasure hosting you all. Uh, we do have a meal prepared for our uh, guest and our uh, audience. So please, as we exit, please feel free to come over and join us. Uh, we will have the blessing over there since half of our group is already over there. Uh, again, thank you for a wonderful job. There is one person that I would like to um, recognize. Um, this biography tea, this is our 15th year, and Ms. Durchak puts her heart and soul into this program. Ms. Durchak, we'd like to have you come up. So on behalf of all of us, students and staff and parents, thank you so much for all you do and for making this program, the, make, for making history come alive for us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Mr. Mr. Billy, getting up and doing this and you know, having to do it over and over again for practice. All the support for this program is amazing. And the parents, I really appreciate the, the kids. You guys do an amazing job. I'm proud of every single one of you. Just were just amazing. So thank you, Mr. Billy.
Okay, we're, as, we, as the music starts, we will have our distinguished guest exit. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us for TLC Prep's Biography Tea, Jeopardy style. 